Hello, hello, everyone. We'll give uh, people a few minutes to join. Meanwhile, if you guys want me to go over a particular keyword, feel free to drop it in. If there's any type of content that you're facing problems with when writing with concepts or methods, uh, drop it in chat and uh, I can uh, start from there. More so than a specific uh, keyword, I just want to, when you, if you're going after something that is very competitive, Mm -hmm. uh, and there's just no way around it. Do you use any difference in your approach than something that's uh, low competition? Yes, absolutely. If so, let's say like what is going to be low competition and what is going to be high competition. Most likely, uh, short tail keywords will be will have higher comp competition, and uh, long tail keywords will have lesser competition. So I've taken these two approaches. When I'm going after something which is super competitive my content will be so much, so much in depth that there's just nothing more than that out there to be covered. If I'm going after something that has lesser competition, I'm not to vary on covering areas which my SERP or my SERP analysis is not suggesting me. You know, I, I could just go with that. But if it was super competitive and I, I really want to rank for it, the only way to try it is creating really in-depth content. And over the period of time, you can uh, get some backlinks to it to rank for it. But the approach stays just, I mean, the, the approach is pretty much same, right? Like you really need to create uh, awesome content to rank for either ways. But if it is super competitive, just go that extra mile and make sure there's nothing out there that anybody else can cover besides you. Like there's a couple of examples, right? So let me start sharing my screen. I'll show you. Those, those might and might not be in effect right now. And uh, we'll just find that out. But. So I was uh, targeting this, which is SQL server. This is something that I was really targeting and I wanted to uh, rank for. So this is the topic that I've written and it ranks for it. But some of these guys out there, Learn SQL, DB engines, they, they all had pretty good content out there. Some of these guys like DataCamp and IO, right? Like, I mean, these guys were ranking there for this particular piece since years. And for me to take over them, and say, you know what, I have better content. I just needed to create depth and proper structuring so more users are able to understand that content. So like I put in, uh, I don't know what happened here. This is after I left, but I put in proper uh, tables uh, and structuring of content. I did lots of over-optimization, if you'd say sometimes. If you see some of these things right here, right? What is your friend? Like this is some... Some parts of it are redundant. Compare geographical data in PostgreSQL versus MySQL. But this is, again, a classic example, right? Like how many times you use a keyword in your content is insignificant when it comes to writing good content. And this is a particular example where there is some sort of uh, a little bit uh, over the board uh, keyword stuffing, right? You could say that I'm specifically targeting some exact keywords that I want to rank for. This blog post is bringing upwards of 36,000 pages the day I left uh, Enterprise EB. But this is how you'd go about like really making sure there's just nothing better than what you have written out there. Uh, that just means that it'll take you a little more time to build out the content. Think about all the ifs and buts. Maybe create a multi-keyword document and go after certain other keywords which are peripheral to just to just to make sure that you have that depth that nobody else does. How long did it take before you started getting results? Oh man! So this one was, if I could recall, most of the average site it really depends on domain authority, like how fast your website is getting indexed, right? And what your domain authority is. Uh, for the site, when last year this domain authority of this uh, particular domain was approximately sixty-five, and it was taking me anywhere from eight to nine days to at least get it on the first page, if the content was really good. In certain cases, I was not able to, and. In those cases, I kept refining the content until I did see some results in uh, coming up in Google. So yeah, I mean, it really depends on the authority of your site, how many times your site is being indexed, what sort of bandwidth Google has given you while indexing your websites. Many factors will play. Also social signals. So make sure you share your content a little bit. If there is stronger social signals coming to it, Google can catch on that as well and index your site not only faster, but start thinking of it as authority even before you start getting those CTR values assigned uh, to your page from Google. Yep. You're welcome. Definitely. Thanks. Let's go ahead and get started with this webinar. And uh, feel free to drop in. Like nobody has dropped in any keyword yet. Pick out anything super complex that you want to go after. Let's go ahead and get started with that. Project management training. All right, project management training. Uh, 
this is competitive keyword. You can see CPC is quite high. Competition is quite high. Let's see what we can do here. So what, there's also an interesting approach. When you're trying to rank for something like this, right? Like project management training, high CPC, it's going to be tons and tons of ads. Uh, no matter what you do, the click-through rate on that page, even if you rank in the top three, is going to be quite lesser because there's just so many ads out there. In that case, turn on the pillar page setting from your SEO score overview and score your content very critically to be able to start acquiring some traffic from peripheral keywords, long tail keywords that you could potentially target with the same short tail keyword that you're trying, you're creating content from. Okay. Let's go ahead and get started here. I'll just uh, quickly select a few things so we can uh, deep dive into some more complex stuff. So what's happening behind the scenes when you select pillar content? I'm nosy. Sorry. Uh, what happens behind the scene when I click what? Pillar content. Okay. So the scoring mechanism changes. What we then look for is deep, deeper, even keywords where your competition has not used it, but are some sort of relevancy to it. They don't necessarily exactly align with the user intent, but parts of the content that you would build out might. So we'll start thinking much more critically. And instead of giving you a higher score at 80 percentile uh, of coverage of all the requirements, we'll now score it as high as 98, 99, 100 percent. It's just not possible. There will be always outliers. So that's what's happening is that the mechanism for scoring your content based on related keywords and content depth changes or becomes more stricter. And I'm sorry, Mr. something. There's something, there's something you push or a button to say that you're going to do pillar content. Yes, I'll show you. Okay, I missed that. Let's just create some quick outlines so we can go to you that blink. part. And go ahead. I said you blink, Dewey. Okay. All right. So what is project management training or the people behind it? I'm not sure if that's something that you'd want to cover. So again, right? Like I, I see that probably lots of people are doing courses here. That's why there's not so much depth to this content. Let's go ahead and see SERP outline. Okay, why do you, okay, this website was not scanned. Number two was not scanned either. Number three, okay, exam preparation, right? Uh, exam prep training. Maybe that's something that you want to include. This is corporate training solution. So here, like for this kind of keyword where there's courses and stuff like that, right? Like I want to answer tons of questions, first of all, because project management training, it can have a lot of stuff. So what I'd usually start with is 5Ws and uh, there's an update in the next release for this 5W. So what is training? important, right? I'm just going to start typing certain things. Don't go on my spellings here. Training, but okay. Require a certificate management. That actually say certifications. Everybody's looking for specific certifications like PMP, Scrum Master. Yep. Right. Uh, so there's quite a few, right? So I think uh, you can add like, how can you acquire? So you can add like, these are the training courses that you can pr pretty much go after. And maybe one could be yours, which is more specific. And, uh, you know, you're targeting like certain set of uh, specific users, like uh, there's agile project management, construction management, there's many scrum master certification, right? So all of those things can fall under this, like how can you acquire a certification? So maybe let's do this, right? So I would say there's this. There's this, there is agile engineering project management. So I, I don't know like what really belongs to it, but yeah. So Scrum master, agile, organizational leadership, right? And just create that structure like very in-depth that has everything in it. But you can highlight obviously the section that uh, you are, you're trying to probably sell the audience to in a more specific way or a better way. Okay, let's, I'm just going to delete this though. We kind of have this. You can score your outlines based on this. So this is minimalistic. So let's talk about pillar page and regular page, right? What this is doing is it's going and reading through all the pages. We identify all the keywords that your competition has used in the content. Some that they have not used it that you should, but we're considering that you only probably need to use about 60 to 70% of that coverage because some topics might not be very relevant to what you are doing. They might have slightly different user intent. And that might that means that you might be easily able to outrank them, even if you just focus on spe specific keywords. But when you go for pillar page, we tend to not only look at the SERP data, but everything that the keyword API is giving us 
even the keywords that are not currently mapped in SERP or nobody's using in SERP. So it's more stricter, but it can have certain uh, issues. Like there can be many outliers, but there will be many opportunities in there as well, which can help you rank for other peripheral keywords. Okay, let's go ahead and go to outlines. Yes, absolutely. Uh, oh, that should be pretty fun. Instant pot to black rice. We have a workflow for that. So we can pretty much do that in 15 minutes. Okay, so let's uh, get started here. And this is where Dewey, you would go to do a pillar page. This is regular. This is pillar page. And we'll see some, let's go ahead and look at one of the blog posts that is actually ranking. Okay, I had a question while you're here. Yep. In this domain list, if I click the eye and turn it off, what effect is that having on the rest of my writing and my instructions? Is it actually doing anything? Is it yes. my related keywords? Is it because a lot of times I'll get Wikipedia or National Geographic and I can't compete with either one of those. So I'd like yeah. to take a note. So what I would so there is an approach that you need to take in order to exclude that, right? So what you would want to exclude from those pages, one, first of all, is their uh, depth because most likely they will lack in depth, right? So any depth related matrices you want to exclude. So it could be sometimes that some pages have uh, 10,000 words of comments, right? And you just want to ignore that particular page from being calculated into the matrix. So it ignores the depth when you switch this off. And the second thing that it ignores is research. So it will not, whenever you are writing with concepts or anything that reads existing information, it will not read those pages. So that's the two things that it's excluding. Does that make sense? So let's say for example, right? So your instructions will change a little bit. Let's go to research and identify one of the biggest topics over here, right? So let's say this is the top topic. That is the longest topic. This is the longest topic. So I'm going to exclude this and okay. So I excluded the 5,000 ones. So now my this maximum changed to 2,800. Otherwise it would have been higher, right? So based on this matrix is what we are calculating is suggesting you the words uh, that will also change. So uh, those are the matrices like content depth element and research that changes, but we still want to collect information uh, or some parts of information that is actually making that page rank which is keywords, certain keywords that they've used, certain topics that they use, certain keywords, the way they have used it in their content is important to consider the ranking factors when it comes to going after a particular keyword. Yeah, okay. I was more concerned with the words. I had a, I'm just doing keyword writing the other day and the average was 5,000 words. And it was like, well, that's just silly. Yeah, that's, you can ignore those pages uh, easily just to turn it off. Yeah, all okay. right, thank you. You got it, okay. So uh, Dewey, on to your question right here. This is where you change the pillar page content and regular page content. Okay, all right. So before I deeper dive uh, into concepts or anything, uh, I think a majority of you have been using the product here, at least from that I see. So I don't want to reiterate the same thing with concepts and generating anything. I'd love to answer some specific questions before I move on to that instant pot of black rice. I'm sure you guys have questions. One of the issues I'm still having with is getting enough wordage in my intros for topics or whatever. So if you're looking at this first H2 here, mm -hmm. you'll click to generate concepts. You'll pick out your concepts. And I probably, me personally, for some reason, I only usually end up with maybe 60 to 100 words. And a lot of times I find it's not enough and I'd like to get more in there. So my, my question is, how do I get more? A lot of times what I'll do is I'll go into your gear wheel there and I'll change the, the wordage in there mm -hmm. and redo it again and then add some more. But to me, there, there's got to be a different way. Oh, there's definitely a different way. Okay, so let me show you this. So the next time, so when you do the regular default and generate concepts, understand. So we are using a summarization method. So the way that works is that the more content you select, if there are repeating elements in it, the more concise your output is going to be. So it's going to be smaller than what you put it in. Uh, but as you reduce the size of concepts that you are passing to summarize, your content will now have almost equivalent or a little more context to it. So that's one way. Summarize lesser concepts to write more is one way. Second is, let me delete this. 
use a different uh, template and I'll show you what that template is. We just added a new template called key point, add that. I'll show you how you can write so much more out of this and fluff free is what I'm talking about. So you can start in individually and maximize and then just kind of go through what you don't need, adjust them all to into like, it's just, I don't know, you can write like probably 3000 words out of just this right here. Yeah, but see, that's right. I absolutely hate you. Select your umbrella there. All I get most of the time is maybe a line of, of text or data. You're you're getting complete paragraphs. So I don't okay, so it's two different things. Okay, so I used a different summarization technique. I used a different concept technique to pull out data. So uh, let let's go to what is default and what is key point, right? Let's say when you have something and here. This is a specific example that I'll show you. Okay, so you see, on like uh, there are certain matrices which are important element when you're building out some type of content where you need statistics and product information or numbers and information which cannot be altered no matter what. It's important part of your research, right? That's when you use like default. So if you're writing something very broad where numbers could you know hardly matter or you have your own numbers you just want to write content and then just make those small edits you use a different technique but as you use more and more of the product you'll understand like how this actually happens so this is one liners right like look at this online training courses 100% online now what happens when i try to write content just for this how much context does it have right all it knows is that we're talking something about this and we have something like this in description. And I need to now write about online training courses, 100% online, right? Like that's very little context that we are giving it. So what's going to happen now when I pull this out, either it's give me little information or it's going to give me a bunch of information that might not be relevant uh, or, you know, adjacently re relevant. So let's go ahead and see what happened here. We talked about IDC here. I don't know what IDC is. I don't know what benefits are. Like, I, I don't know one, two hour per week. Like I did not pass all this information to it. I just wanted to write factual information, right? So in that case, what you need to do is you need to select a little more context and pass it in. So it can understand, okay, this is how it's tied in together. And this is what I can probably write around it. There's sections which has tons and tons of data that you are trying to write around, I would use this method because more concise is okay. But when you're trying to build out informational related content, which just you know, lots of other information that you need to cover besides just the key facts and stuff, use default as your key points. And it will almost always give you sentences which are properly formed, are rewritten already, and that you can build out to create this content. So you will see a significant difference between these two templates. Excellent. We'll give that a try. Usually I start with an intro and then I go to default settings. So I'll try to have it write an intro. Okay. So you're trying to write an intro for just a, this small thing. Yeah. So intro should uh, give you default concepts from that introduction. And yeah, that's, that's a little different, right? So that you're just building out that introduction and then you can get into that details. For details, you can regenerate concepts using key points. So first thing you do is go to introduction generate your introduction related key points. Once you're done with it, just regenerate it with key points here. And it will add those key points in the bottom. So now you can build out, you know, more content towards it. So this right. can be used to build out your introduction. And this can be the things that you talk right after that. Excellent. Thanks, bud. You're welcome. Okay, how does it help to seed paragraph before using the concept? Okay, seed paragraph as in like an introductory couple of lines, or are you talking about the introduction of that particular block? I guess it could be either, but I was what I've been doing is doing like some of the intro methods. So usually I'll do one or two. So I can one usually does better than another, which is fine. And then I've been going into doing some of the concepts with the outline. Is that helpful or is it not helpful? Oh, that's absolutely perfect way, right? Go from introduction, get into the details right after that and use concepts for it. Now, you did ask for Instant Pot Black Rice recipe, right? That's a recipe, right? Instant Pot uh, Black Rice? Yeah, it's in my site's ranking for Instant Pot Red Rice. So I'm going to do Instant Pot Black Rice. So I just thought if there's time, I'd throw it out there. It's also known as Forbidden Rice. So forbidden it can, 
Yeah, uh, forbidden. That's black rice, right? Like yeah, those yeah, black yeah. rice that you get in uh, Whole Foods. I've seen those <laughs> before. Okay. Yes. Interesting piece. I mean, an interesting seed. But okay. So we can create a, a recipe for that as well, and you, you can also create like black rice recipes around it if that keyword will start ranking for it. Okay. We'll we'll look at that as well. Just you know, after like, let me go through this, and then we can uh, start with that keyword again. Any other question here, guys? Sure. Like, uh, let me ask you this. Like, what's, what are some of the most common templates you guys have been using to create content using concepts from this right here? Is it the default one? I've been playing with a few of them, but I think I haven't done, I didn't do as much work this past week. So it looks like there's some new ones. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, key points is new ones. But yeah, sometimes with features that can be helpful or not. I've tried going back and forth between features and default. Most of the time, since I'm trying to introduce a recipe, benefits and those sorts of things can be helpful, but it doesn't usually produce good content for me. Like right. with this black rice, it probably would. Okay. But if it's pumpkin spice syrup, right? Oh, oh, that's that's easy too. I'll show you that. Uh, it's totally okay. customizable. Okay, so if there, okay, I'm just uh, looking at one more question before I jump onto that recipe thing. Is there a way to use right for me to keep expanding on uh, concept output? Yes, absolutely, Will, right? So here it is. So let's say I've written this using concepts. Now I want to keep writing for me. There's a couple of ways. You can delete this and you know, let it, yes, right. Like, so this is going to work as just pretty much same, but we have a little logic changes here. So let's go ahead and look at this. So I deleted that full stop and now I can do right for me here. Absolutely fine. It will start building out or finishing up that particular paragraph and giving you uh, more information that you can then keep pushing like right for me and take it into the direction that you want. It gave you a full sentence. Let's see what happens. So if it gave you a full sentence, you go to a new paragraph and you click right for me, it won't let you write. It'll tell you to add at least a word or a sentence. So it wants you to take control and guide it a little more as to what you want to go further with. So I could say further more or any other like, you know, transition word or any more context that you want to add. You can also go here, let's say, and I could say furthermore, copy management, and then I start writing for it, right? So it's many things. So it just, it predicted that the sentence was ending here, but okay, let's delete this and say learning and teaching. This is not doing that. So it will start building that out. There we go. So it's, it's about like guiding it just a little bit more and making sure that you don't let it deviate too far off. If you are right, so th this is a common practice that I use when I'm doing right for me is I provide it enough context so it knows exactly what I'm trying to cover in this particular paragraph. And then when I do right for me, I make sure that I put on the lowest so I can uh, guide it as long, like, you know, in whatever direction that I want instead of like constantly having to go and delete stuff again and again. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and go to a new keyword. And what I'm about to show you, I think I showed, I shared a video of this earlier, but uh, not many people saw this as it was not posted properly in the group, but let's go ahead and look at a recipe. So what was that syrup recipe that you said, Kathy? Pumpkin spice syrup. Let's copy this, paste it, search. Okay, so pumpkin spice syrup, right? Like this competition is as, I have, as high as it can get. So I would probably add a recipe to it and see. Okay, so this is much more achievable, which is pumpkin spice syrup recipe. Let's copy that in. And you will see more of such structuring in the next release is like, you'll be able to uh, define your own workflow. So this is one of the workflows that I've created specifically for writing recipe blog posts. So I want to write recipe blog posts as fast as I can and with some inputs that I give it from my side. So let's go ahead and give this a try. Okay. And I am going to just skip right through this. Okay. And okay. So vegan pumpkin spice uh, syrup recipe, that's very specific, right? That's great. Uh, so you'll probably be able to relate to this uh, once I start uh, creating this content. So Recipe, so I've created like eight steps for this. And let's go ahead and get started. So first is recipe description. Come in. 
write a tone. So you want to probably write your kids, or you can also use fun. So I'm using tone of voice, a combination of tone and voice to give it a personality. You can also use just a tone. You can say a curious, fun, anything that you'd wish, but this combines tone and voice together. So it's a little more flexible and creative in what it does. Okay, let's go ahead and come in. Okay, you can adjust this a little bit and keep working with this. If you want to intensify certain emotions, you can say fall, as pumpkin is made in fall, right? So I want to talk something like more specific about fall, and then it will build out the description for that. So I will call this my recipe description. And let's make this an H2. Now, the second step I want to go through is write recipe ingredients, right? So I'm going to command it. It's going to give me some recipe ingredients, uh, which might or might not be exactly what you have. But I could just use that as a template and then put my stuff in is what uh, you're saying. Yes, right? exactly. So now let's say you want to put nutmeg in it, right? Like, that's fine. Uh, let's say I want to just use nutmeg as my ingredient in it, right? You could do that. You get a teaspoon of uh, one it probably teaspoon or something like that to be a little more specific, but let's say you've written down your ingredients, right? You add your own ingredients and now you want to create steps or instructions on how to create this particular recipe. So once you have that, let's go here and create cooking instructions. It's going to ask me to select at least 600 characters. So I have to select the ingredients. So let's select the ingredients and command it to write cooking instructions. Okay, it just wrote two steps and probably it's two steps or you can modify this and make more steps out of it. Or we can try again as well. For that recipe, it's pretty close. The only it's thing I would, <laughs> yeah, it's because pretty much you cook all the stuff together. The only thing that would be different is straining something out, really. Well, I put whole spices in, so like whole cloves, whole cardamom, whole, you know, all of those things. So you cook it, you strain it, and that's Got it. Okay, so yeah, that, that could be one of the twists that you can add to your uh, content, make it just a little better or more personalized. But yeah, so instructions, H2, and just kind of go through this eight steps. We've also added a recipe calculator or nutrition calculator. It's not uh, the perfect one, but it's pretty close. So you can uh, select uh, the nutrition, the ingredients, command it, it's, it's just... So it, it will kind of tell you how many calories and stuff that it has. If you want something more specific, there's a couple of other sites uh, where you just put in your ingredients and it'll give you an exact patch that kind of puts out uh, this uh, calories and stuff like that as well. So yeah, just go through this like eight steps, right? And okay. uh, you'd have a recipe in like no time. And most, pe most recipe bloggers or food bloggers, we're using recipe cards. So WP Recipe Maker has a really good nutritional calculator, create through Mediavine, because I'm, I'm in Mediavine, but like, because I'm in such a health niche, people get, even though I have a disclaimer, like, they would freak out if it's not right. <laughs> yep, exactly right. So I, I, that's why I said like Media Wine's perfect example. And uh, some of this training over here as well is based out of that. So yeah, use Media Wine and just dump this uh, ingredients in it. It's pretty clever at giving you that uh, nutritional. Yeah, perfect. All right. So this was a quick uh, overview of how you'd go about uh, creating recipes. Oh, thank you so much for that, because it would be so nice to be able for me to, because I already have my recipe and a little bit of stuff to be able to pass that in and then have that go to concepts would be so amazing yes absolutely yeah th th that's why i wanted to keep it open-ended when it came to ingredients because that's the something that's going to change and uh, it's super personalized and based on that your instructions and everything else will also change right so that was the key element so we've kept that open-ended for you to uh, provide your own ingredients and then adjust the instructions based on that sounds good okay all right covered two topics uh and some concepts as well as the workflow for recipe. I do see a few people joining in a little late. If you guys are facing any issue with the product on how to use it, or uh, there's specific areas that you could really use some help, I'm happy to cover that. I'm playing along with you as you go through that. Has talk, topic coverage changed? There seems to be a lot more information in here now. A new heat map, clusters, two and three words. 
Yes, we are now using Google NLP and the couple of updates that we the update we did last week as well has this logic updated. So we are using an Google NLP now to collect all the topics and we've added heat map. This was in the last release. So we've added heat map to allow you to pinpoint which are the things that you are using and which are the things that you could potentially use to talk about things that your competitors are not doing a good job, job at and also covering some key elements. Yes, this changed uh, a lot in the last release. You can also go granular and see what other domains are doing. Okay, so what exactly does all this mean? When I look at a heat map, that's like, holy cow, man, that's like- Right, so so let's not even go to the heat map yet and look at this, right? So let's go on. This are, if you see this blue boxes, that means almost all pages have this particular keyword mentioned in it. As you go down and you start seeing some green, these are some topics which not all people have mentioned, some have uh, mentioned, but are very closely relevant to the intent that you're serving. So pumpkin spice lattes, you're just creating spice syrup, right? But it might be good to mention latte and how you can use your probably syrup in that latte. So some people are doing that and ranking for additional uh, terms, right? So we wanted to make sure that we cover uh, at least a most important keywords out. And that's why we changed the engine from NLP to Google and regular Python LLP to Google NLP, extracting a lot more information in a much more precise way. And the AI in this function as well will bring up places where I can modify my content. Yes, absolutely. Right. So let's say ingredients. Let's look at this. You have mentioned ingredients in your H2, uh, like I was, like I have. This is how your competition has mentioned ingredients in their content, which is not relevant at all. So this is great because you mentioned ingredients and this gives you a chance. Uh, now let's look at, put all the ingredients into a pot and heat on low until the mixture starts to boil. This is what have you have used it. So since you have used it, it's no, currently used, it's no problem. But let's say you wanted to use a co- competing uh, sentence, you can uh, SE optimize, which will just rewrite it and then you can copy it and take it wherever you want. Uh, so just copy and paste it. So it allows you to go through all your comp- uh, competition and also your information to optimize uh, and just research both. And this applies in related keyword as well. So there's a heat map over here as well, which is specifically related to related keywords. This is something that at least in outranking, we consider related keywords to be super important in how they are used and where they are used. Topics are to make sure that you have, you're serving the user intent in the best possible way, but this keyword usage will really amplify your ranking potentials uh, if used in the right way. And this is where we are suggesting that you should use this keyword. So if it is yellow, that means that uh, a few people have talked about it. Not a lot of people have talked about it, which is good. So let's say pumpkin spice, simple syrup recipe, right? Like we talked about just recipe, but if you were to rank for simple syrup recipe, include this in one of your headings, right? And you have a fighting chance to rank for this particular keyword, even if it does not belong in your title. I have one question because when I'm looking at this, just exactly like you're saying, so it says pumpkin spice over and over again. So sometimes I start feeling like I'm keyword stuffing if Mm -hmm. I'm using too many of these, right? Because so would you maybe say simple syrup recipe or use part of those or do those? That's fine. That's fine. That should serve the purpose. Although your scoring might not be affected, at least on the platform right now, and we're making that change for the next release, but it should serve the intent. You should be okay with if you don't use pumpkin spice again and again, and just use a pancake syrup recipe or something like that, you can get away with it. It's fine. But Again, think this, right? Okay. I, and I agree, like sometimes this takes away the readability and how good you want and structured your content to look like. Uh, but think this, and every developer out there would probably agree with you. Every time you do any kind of search, right? Either you do in Google, you do it on a website, you do it through a repository in uh, your Google Drive or a uh, Prezi, I don't know, anywhere. What is the first thing the algorithm is going to look for uh, when you enter that query, exact match. It's, it's just a no brainer. It looks for exact match every time when it does not find an exact match. That's when it starts looking for semantically related keywords or something that makes close enough sense 
to to that search query that you've entered, right? So I really haven't tested this hypothesis, but I've had uh, successes with both types. I have had more successes when I have the full keyword in the uh, H2. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. There are some really great questions. Uh, this is the first time anyone's asking about this sort of information. So it's great. I'm, I'm glad that you guys are finding value and exploring the tool further. Okay. Any other question, guys? Yeah. How did how would you improve the sections there? It says needs improvement. Sections needs improvement, right? So let's go ahead and look at why does it need improvement, right? So you go to instruction, create sections. It is telling me that an average page has around 18 sections, right? So they've talked about like, this could also be a section, these three. But what it's suggesting is that on an average, 18 H2s and H3s together have been present uh, on pages. You only have four. So it's because we have not created the full content piece. It's, it's suggesting that. Once you are close to this, your score will improve. Then you'll get a tick box here. And it's okay, so not every time you need a tick box, uh, you can still see improvements in score as you uh, pr uh, progress uh, gradually. But look at the, some of the same things. You're not used any of these keywords in any of your sections yet, right? So uh, you'd probably wanna include a lot of FAQs for this particular recipe and talk about you know some of this nitty gritty, like how to use pumpkin spice uh, syrup in a latte recipe, right? that would probably target this keyword. You could use that in your FAQ. Once you start using all of these keywords, the right place that we are suggesting, which is H2, H3, uh, or any of the em emphasized tags, you will start getting tick marks here as well, and your score will improve further. So let's go ahead and just look at this. So I'll add an FAQ, H3, paste this in, oh, control shift Z. Uh, let's try and convert this into a question if I can. Okay, uh, here, it's one interesting question that targets that particular keyword, right? If there is, if there is not, then probably focus on, I don't know why I pasted here. Okay, but let's say, yeah, something associated with this, right? So, there's some reason it's stupid. Oh, yes, uh, never mind. This needs to be in the bold or an H3 tag. So, I'm going to make it a bold. And it's still not. Okay, never mind. This needs to be an H3 tag, sorry. Okay, this will definitely turn. So by using this particular keyword in any of my H tags or H2 or H3, those are the two most important tags after your heading and your title, right? So if I'm using this, it'll start turning green and that will start improving your score slightly, a little bit, little bit. You can have a different uh, set of meaning to it as far as you're targeting the same keyword or same intent to make pumpkin spice or how to make a pumpkin spice latte recipe with syrup, right? So something like that. Yeah, this, this totally works too. There we go. And I'm targeting a couple of other keywords too, which are, I don't know, what is the 1883? It's probably the kind of syrup out there, but you could potentially be placed in all of those search terms. Thank you. Okay, we're reaching the final uh, few minutes. Any other question, guys? Sounds good. Um, Okay, so I hope you guys have found value out of this webinar. If there's anything more specific that you'd like me to cover, drop it uh, in my DM chat over here or in the group, happy to cover that. If you are struggling with any keyword that you're trying to create content with and you're facing problems with concepts or anything in the product, feel free to post it in the group or send me a DM. I'm happy to uh, cover those topics in the next webinar or at least to help you out with a small video if I can. Already, guys, it was um, great chatting. Awesome. I just wanted, to, excuse me. I just wanted to say thanks, man. I appreciate this all the time. Are you very welcome, man? Absolutely. I love uh, these Thursdays. <laughs> Absolutely. Is this going to go? Uh, this is going to become much more interesting uh, as we go. We're trying to create a specific tracks for advanced, as well as uh, starting to prepare for January release. Uh, you will start learning a lot more about this. So. The, the thing is that the process, the product is still a little complex for certain beginners and to find certain things and use it in the right, perfect workflow that you are probably working with. So the next release is going to simplify a lot of these things. Any type of content that you are trying to create, the platform can pretty much guide you through from step A to uh, the final finish line in a very strategic manner without you having to uh, do a lot of uh, thinking or understanding of the product in hand before. I'll see you guys next week. Alrighty, guys. See ya.